Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Vitus's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Vitus is a healthcare company. The company is headquartered in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania and was founded in 2020. Last year Mylon shares were converted to Vitra shares and the company trades on the NASDAQ. Mylon originally IPO'd in 1984. Vitris was formed through the merger of Mylon and Upjohn last year. Mylon was originally founded in 1961. Upjohn is a division of Pfizer. It produces and sells different types of medicine such as Viagra, Xanax, and Lipitor. It also sells over-the-counter drugs. The company's medications help cardiovascular, infectious disease, oncology, immunology, anesthesia, diabetes, and much more. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 16 billion market cap. They're trading at 1340 a share, and they have 1.2 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. All the previous financials were Mylon's numbers. You can see they had pretty strong free cash flow every year except in 2020. It dropped a bit. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was positive every year. Pretty small in 2019 and a big negative in 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's pretty steady around 11 and a half to 12 billion dollars a year. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. An example is the cost of labor. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. Their gross profit is decreasing each year from 4.8 billion to 3.8 billion. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are depreciation and marketing. Then below that is operating income. And that's also decreasing each year from 1.4 billion to negative 100 million. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. And they did pay the least interest in 2020 under half a billion. Below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or write-offs, then your pre-tax income, your taxes, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And they had a big negative in 2020, positive in prior years. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You can see they generated positive operating cash flow each year, peaking in 2018 at $2.3 billion. Operating cash flow is net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. So operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. That peaked in 2018 at 1.2 billion. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And free cash flow is the cash that's remaining to pay down debt, to buy back stock, to invest back into your business, or to pay a dividend. I believe this company plans to pay a dividend sometime later in the year. A way to reward shareholders is to buy back stock, because when a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. They bought back nearly $1 billion of stock in 2017 and 2018. They also do a good job at paying down debt. Each year they pay down more debt than they issued. Let's look at the capital structure. $23 billion of equity, $26 billion of debt. Their 47% equity, 53% debt. And their WAC is 6.36%. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $19 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 17.6 billion. We divide that by 1.2 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1459. They're trading at 1340, so they're trading at an 8% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is way higher than me. They're at $49 a share. So you can see my future free cash flow estimates were pretty conservative. They had well over $1 billion in the past. 
but I still think this stock is undervalued even with my conservative estimates. So you can see the stock has really struggled the past five years. It was close to $50 at one point, but it's come all the way down. It's at its low point right now. So it looks like it could be a really great value. Their beta is 1.55, so the stock moves one and a half times the market. The stock has gone down 17% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 50%. The 52 week low was 13, the high was 19. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About 10 to 11 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Over 79% of the shares are held by institutions and about 2.5% of the shares on float or shorted. In the past year, three years and five years, this stock has really struggled, performing much worse than its industry and much worse than the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 43% while its industry grows 19% and the market grows 19%. Analysts are also forecasting their earnings to grow 5% while the industry grows 6% and the market grows 10%. Vanguard is the biggest shareholder at 11%, then BlackRock, Wellington, State Street, and Macquarie. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 1.4. So investors are paying $1.40 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.7. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And they have 23 billion of equity, negative 19 billion of tangible equity, since they have 42 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have a negative return on invested capital because they have negative EBIT, also negative interest coverage ratio, negative ROE, current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities 1.2 times. And their current assets are 1 billion of cash, 5 billion of receivables, and 5.5 billion of inventory. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They had over half a billion of free cash flow and over 2.3 billion of working capital. So they have almost 2.9 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as Vitris. And if Vitris has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. They're doing much better than average in price to sales and price to book. They're worse than average in current ratio. They do have a better ROE even though it's negative. They're higher in debt than average. And their market cap is much higher than average at 16 billion. Average is seven and a half billion. And nobody in this industry pays a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 8% discount. I think this new company should do well. It comes from two really strong companies, a division of Pfizer and another company that's been around since 1961. I rank their free cash flows five out of 10, their revenue seven out of 10, and their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.